welcome back so this is the place where I have extracted our project and now I'm going to copy this and go to my IntelliJ and click on open and paste the link here for our project and just go ahead and open that project here so IntelliJ is going to open our project inside this and then it is going to resolve all the maven dependencies because we are using maven as our build tool so it's going to look for all the dependencies that we have provided in our pom.xml file those dependencies it will automatically try to download so that's what is happening here at the bottom so if you click here you will see that it is downloading many dependencies and once it has downloaded it's going to keep them in your computers C drive users folder and there it will create a folder called m2 and that's the folder where it is going to download all these dependencies related to maven so we had added h2 database we had added spring boot starter web we had added other things like so this all got downloaded and they are now being put into the m2 folder of your c drive users location once it has done this then from here on the right side here here we can click on this and start to build the project if you want to re generate every sources or refresh your project or do a re-import of all maven you can click here as well it's going to try to download if there are any new dependencies so if we look into our project here what we see is it has source main and source test so a source main and then in the java is what is the place where we are going to write our java classes and source main resources is the location where we can put keep some configuration files some static html css files what whatever we want and in the source test we could we can write the test like unit test using junit or mockito for our files that we will create here in source main java so having said that these are the folders inside src which is source and then we have a dot git ignore where it is defined what should not be committed to the github repository so let's say if you don't want to commit another file which you create you can give it here so let's say here it says do not commit target folder slash anything inside target should not be committed similarly help.md so don't commit help.md similarly there will be a dot git dot git ignore as well to not commit dot idea dot mvn these are all excluded so it won't uh, commit those okay then we have this form xml which is basically all the dependencies related to maven which our project needs and here you see external libraries so these are actually the references from your m2 folder where maven downloaded all the files and kept it so here is the reference so you, you see the h2 and then then the other dependencies which are transitive in nature all are kept here so now we can build our project in multiple ways we can go to this location by right clicking and see show in explorer and open command prompt there in this location i can open a command prompt and do maven clean install or what i can do is i can directly from here in on this maven tab on this side i can expand this a little bit maybe minimize this and open this and go to lifecycle and here you see all the maven lifecycles are present clean phase validate phase compile test package install verify those things so if we 
want to run more than one lifecycle method so we can press click on it and then keep pressing con control and click on the another one so i want to now have run clean and install together so do this and click this button don't click here the green button click here so click this so once we do this it is going to also run other things as well like it will then automatically validate compile and test and package so that's how maven works if you run a higher version of the goal then it is going to run its all all previous goals as well and what it is doing now it was it cre it deleted the target folder here if it was existing and then now it is building all the source files that we had here dot java files it is building them and compiling them to this dot java and the other files again to dot class files and then those dot class files will be stored here in dot target plus what it also did is it created a jar file for our project itself and what it did it it gave the name of the jar file as property management and then the version it assigned it to this one and it created this jar file because while downloading we asked it to prepare it as a jar file and then it created the target folder and kept the jar file here so if you see this is the jar file which it created and also it created other folders where it kept the dot classes file so if you want to deploy now anywhere you can take this jar file and deploy it and you can run it by running java space minus jar and then this jar file name then it will run as a standalone program because every spring boot application has its own server inside it like the embedded tomcat server but those things we will look at it later how to deploy the, uh, the any spring boot application for now maven clean install compiled all the class classes and then created a jar file put the jar file and the compiled classes in the target folder here and also took this jar file and kept it inside our computer c drive m2 folder it kept there there as well this jar file so this is what has happened and our build is successful now that is great so you can see our build was, it was successful and while building it took did lot of things it building it was building our jar and as i said it created a name of the jar like this and kept it in the target it also ran some tests and there were no failures and no errors perfect now if we want to run our project because this was just the build that we did from here so you can minimize that one just double click this one and this is a main method class we are seeing and this main method class this is a main method public static void main like any java main method project we have this main method but this has a special thing inside it it has spring boot spring app uh, spring application dot run and it has the name of our application which is property management application dot java as its class and the argument is being passed so what this line does is it starts a embedded tomcat server for us whenever when we when we run this class and the spring boot annotation spring boot application annotation what it does it's it is basically making this class as a spring boot configuration class plus it is also making this as a, a component scan class so it is going to scan all the components plus also treat it as a configuration class as well so this is what this annotation would do for us and also it will enable auto configuration that's what it does so if you see this is spring boot annot application class annotation has three things spring boot configuration so it is making our class as a configuration class of uh, spring 
it is enabling auto configurations which means if uh, anything let's say if the database configuration or spring security configuration is present uh, as a dependency here then it is going to automatically invoke that functionality and bring into action which means if i put a spring security dependency here our application will now become secure and spring security will kick in and it will start asking us lots of things that why don't you provide user name credentials so if you put another dependency it is automatically going to kick in its action because of enable auto configuration then we have another dependency and another annotation is component scan which means it keeps on scanning our whole application uh, folders to find out where are at the rate rest controllers at the rate service at the rate component at the rate repository all these annotations are defined in uh, which all classes are defined with these annotations and then it is going to tell spring container to take care of their memory management life cycle so in very short spring boot application annotation comprises of three things one is con it makes our class as configuration class enables auto configuration and does component scan and now we can basically right click on this and run this or also debug this if you see here we don't have anything but as soon as we will run once it will come this class name will come here so from next time onwards we don't have to right click and run from here rather we can run from here with this green button so let's see so now we see our application is starting because as mentioned this line is creating an embedded tomcat server for us and that's what is happening now so if you see here it says tomcat initialized with port 8080 so make sure on nothing is running on your port 8080 if something is running on your port 8080 you can try to choose to run your application on another port by providing configuration here stating server dot port is equal to let's say 98 or something then your application will start on 8089 but as i have nothing running here so my application is running smoothly on my 8080 port under tomcat server embedded tomcat server perfect and if you see we had added spring data jpa hence and also the h2 database so the ORM capability of Spring Boot automatically kicked in because of this. You remember enable auto configuration we have added. So this this was the thing we had added and enable auto configuration via this, and that is what it means. It is it found that there is a Spring Data JPA in the class path, so it enabled the Spring. Uh, data jpa or hibernate related orm capabilities if it would have find spring security then it would enable spring security capability that's what this enable auto configuration means all right so this is all this this one what that you are seeing is a banner it says spring we could provide our own banner as well we could override this configuration and provide our own banner whenever we want all right so this is sufficient information for this video let's conclude this video and continue in the next video thank you